what uh, solution of when you face with a big table, big records. Okay, for instance, at this moment, with the prolif proliferation of web, right, the application is growing huge. It's growing at a very fast uh, pace. When you open, when you put your application on the net, at first maybe it's only, you know, 20 concurrent users, you know, or probably 10 GB data, right? But then after that, what what is happening is that it grows a lot. Maybe in in in, in the next week or so, it already grow your application or your database already grow 50 or 100 GB. That means you actually hosting a lot, a million. Right? Right? Millions of records in tables. So what is the solution for that? You know why? Because because whenever any connection, whenever a, a lot of connection accessing one table, a big table, it's going to be slow. It's a recipe for a slow performance. Why? Because locking, locking happening everywhere in the table, and the index size of the table itself is huge. This is the solution for that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you. Right? Um, let's move on. Raising the bar, OK. Right, so like I mentioned to you, a web uh, the, in the web, our uh, application grows a lot at a huge pace. Right. Now, coming back a little bit, just a backtrack. I believe you guys know that uh, in 2010, MySQL comes under Oracle, right? So, every one of you, not every one of you, I believe at that time, many of you feel, think, hey, MySQL will be gone maybe in a few months. Raise your hand if you think about that. <laughs> okay, thank you for your honesty. <laughs> anyway, anyway, what happened is after five years we are still here. So, so there's a reason why we are still here, and and the the reason is because many big companies already adopting open source technologies, and we cannot avoid it. Companies cannot fight the wave, the big wave of open source coming. So we have to adopt. We have to embrace. So MySQL has been strong in the web application. We are strong in the open source application, right? And it's only right that Oracle uh, embraced us as well. So um, this is a, just a, a brief picture of uh, our, our hard work. We are releasing product regularly every year, OK? Right? Now, in application, because we are facing with such a huge growth, we need the application needs to be responsive and agile. In which, in this case, we need some sort of high availability, right? Meaning that if you have one single server, right? If you have one single database server, what happens if that server? What happens is that server down? From you, you can think 1,001 reason why that server will can come down. Can you? Can you think of one? Uh, faulty in the hardware, you know, electricity drop. All these all this many, many reasons for one single server to go down. So we need high availability. If we, if we have redundancy, one, you know, master and at least clone, a clone of one server. So we have two servers. So one server down, the other, the other still serving the data. The entire data is still running, your application is still running, right? Next is scale data and user loads. When coming to, the, to a huge data growth, you, you, your data is growing by leaps and bounds. Now, you want, what you want to do is you want to scale accordingly. Do you, you don't want to buy one big server, 32 sockets, 
one terabyte of RAM to be able to handle your application, your application for the next seven years, right? It's a huge initial investment for you, isn't it? Right? You want to you want to start with small. You want to start with a low commodity server, right? Low commodity server like two sockets, maybe 30 GB RAM, and then grow and grow and grow according when your application grow accordingly. So you database your investment grow as according to your application grow. Right? OLTP and analytics, we have a you, you need to have a, some sort of OLTP and analytics functions as well, right? Uh, as the, like a big data, is, is the trend that big data is coming into the, uh, right now into the technology, right? So this is uh, to be able, for you, to help you to be able to make an informed decision in a faster manner. Elastic as well for, for server, server provisioning because we are adopting the cloud. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, Elastic means that uh, we are adopting the cloud. We actually can uh, provision the server from the cloud easily, right? Okay, so this is the technical definition of MySQL Fabric. It's an extensible and easy to use framework for managing a farm of MySQL server. So it's basically, it's a distributed database. Distributed database. And this is uh, what 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 it uh, give you is uh, okay. First of all, are you are you all uh, aware? Oh no, sorry, not aware. Um, you do do you know the term sharding? Right, sharding is is used in a lot of term, a lot of uh, place. Okay, sharding means is that say if you have one hundred million records in one table. You split it, for example, into 10 servers. So each server have 10 million records, right? What happened is that after that, in, in each of the server, because the workload is also split, the, the data size is also split, right? So it's easier for you to manage the performance of, of your database because uh, because everything is split, including your workload, right? So that is that is sharding. Then the second function of MySQL Fabric is high availability. Now, you all all of you have already known that uh, one of the major function of feature of MySQL, also available in community, is the replication. Okay, you guys aware of replication is right? Master and slave, the slave is the clone, right? So, so the slave will pull all the data from all the data, data changes from the master. And this is the high availability that we use in Fabric. How we contribute, how, what is the value of Fabric in the replication is that normally replication is done, rep, when replication, when a master is down, the slave should to take over as the new master, right? Now, that normally with replication, that is done manually. You, there, there is no other way you have to do it manually. You have to change must, uh, do a change master command and all this stuff. But with Fabric, it is done automatically. Means that the Fabric process will actually detect the master, whether the master is down or uh, up or down, when it's down, it immediately uh, promote the slave into become the new master, and then the, the rest of the rest of the slave will 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 connect to the new master and pull the data from the new master. It's easy as that, right? So that is that is the major two functions. The, the, the additional function is that, okay, as you know, one of the reasons why people use replication is that to split workload, right? When the, the, the character of web application mostly is 90% of them 
90% of the workload for web application is read, right? Take for example, Google's, Wikipedia, Amazon. Most of the time, you, when you go to Amazon, you are click, 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 looking, looking, searching, 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 and then at the end of the day, you might not buy anything, isn't it? Right? And now, so it's by nature, the workload of uh, web is 90% read. So what happened is that normally people split the, people split, people make a must, have the master and then a couple of slave to actually handle the reads. So the master is free from any read operations. The master only handle the write operations, update, insert, delete. That's it. So the slave moved to uh, the slave that can handle handle the read. Now with without fabric, without fabric, you have to direct direct manually your read and write from the application into the uh, slave or the master without fabric. But with fabric, you can act, it will be directed automatically to the slave. You can set it that way, <laughs> right? Okay. Uh, at this moment, at this moment, uh, okay. Fabric, fabric is uh, work uh, together uh, with the connector, MySQL connectors, right? The connector has to be fabric aware has to be fabric aware means that you have to download the latest version right um, at this moment the one that is uh, supported is Python Java PHP .NET, .NET. and uh, C is still a uh, lab sorry yep so take note of this Python Java PHP and .NET. Anyone need the USB? Want to copy the file? Uh, the zip archive, how does it archive? Because if I try to unzip using my keeps unzipping in the zip. You see the zip inside zip? No, no. It's only a zip. One, one zip. It's a zip, I think. The GZip. Uh, it says DOM. Come again. It's a DOM file. Is there a problem opening that? Any have anyone have problem opening the zip except the uh, the gentleman? Okay, let me continue first. Right. So now the data. Okay, when we talk about data. We put data in the storage. You can be it be it send or sub storage area network, shared storage, right? Or local disk. Anyway, you need storage to put the data in, right? Now, normally, uh, on on an advanced uh, layer, like uh, if you have a high level storage, right? The storage itself is able to do. Uh, uh, you know, redundancy, it's it, it able to do high availability, the storage itself. So they do, they sync each other. If you have a high level of storage, that is, that costs you a lot. Costs you a lot. I don't even imagine, I don't even want to sh share the price. Okay, <laughs> right. Now, normally with MySQL, we, for us, we use, we use uh, high availability on the, like I mentioned to you, we are using replication. That means on the application layer, on the database layer, right? So we don't use the storage to actually sync each other. We just uh, use the replication. Right. Now, but we are, when we talk about HA, it's not just enough to only the to only secure the HA for the storage. You have to secure the application server as well, right? Your application server needs to be more than one. Because if that's application server down, you are gone, right? 
So you need you need to have at least two application server, and then probably have uh, probably put a load balancer on top of the application server. Any load uh, balancer, be it software or hardware, will be. Now, over here, redundant access to data is is where your database software is. The database you need the database software to access the data in the storage, right? Okay. There is. Okay, but now we what we add here is the routing in between each other between the between the data. Okay, the data base software is the MySQL server, right? On top of that, from application server to the database, we need, uh, normally people connect directly from app to, to the database, right? So we need a, we need a routing function, but if, if you have, if you connect directly, if what happens if the network is down, then you are gone, your application is gone. So you need a, redund a redundancy as well, a routing from the app to the database server. Right. So, this database, this routing, we can actually, uh, we can actually strengthen it to, to cross each other as well. So it increase the high availability. Right. So, um, just a little bit of uh, replication type that we have in MySQL is that uh, in MySQL the default is asynchronous. Asynchronous replication. What it means by asynchronous replication is that is uh, is that um, your master, the master server, will not wait for the slave to be updated. So it's the responsibility of the slave to actually pull the data from the master and update itself. Right. That is the default. But starting from okay, uh, starting from MySQL 5.5, we have what we call semi-synchronous. Uh, semi-synchronous is when when you when you receive a transaction, your your MySQL master receive a transaction, it will send the change into the slave <coughs> file system or or relay lock first. Right, you it help it will send the changes to the file system of the slave server. Okay, and then it return back say okay, I acknowledge, and then the transaction is done. Right, so this is in a way making sure that the changes whatever happened is already in the file system on the slave. But take note is that these changes has not been. It's not been replayed in the database yet. It's only on the file system, on the log, on the relay log. So what 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 the uh, storage database need to need to do is that it needs to pull the data from the relay log and replay it in the database itself. So that's why we call it semi-synchronous because it is not fully synchronous, right? By the way, uh, but if you want a synchronous replication solution, that is another. That's a dif different different solution. It is not a replication. It is what we call MySQL cluster. The one in the middle here, MySQL cluster. That is the uh, that is another another product of MySQL. It is also available in Community Edition as well. If you like to make, give it a try, okay. This, that one is the, what, the only solution that can do active, active within MySQL. Active, active uh, solution means that you have two, two server, active, active. One down, the other one still active. Your application only need to redirect to the active one. Right, so... Now... Um, this is the framework of uh, Fabric. So the Fabric controller is the one 
that keep the data, right? It actually in the fabric actually keep the data in a, in one small database, MySQL database as well. So it it use a MySQL database to keep to store all the data of the routing, right? This is under and the process as well. Now, uh, as as I mentioned just now, it is using the connector, PHP, Python, Java, .NET connector. What happened is that all the information of all the, the MySQL fabric structure architecture that you already set up, it will be routed and it will be updated into the connector cache, your MySQL connector cache, right? So when, when it is updated, every time there is a change in your architecture in the fabric, say if, the, if there is the node down, right? And then it will be updated in the status will be updated into the fabric process, into the fabric store. And then it fabric store will actually update your connector cache. Right. That's that's the and this is the actually the entire architecture of your fabric, the HA group. Right. Okay, so you notice that all the like that in this case we have a connector cache, right? Now, at this point, any questions? First. Okay. There is one thing that uh, that uh, you might you might want to ask. What happened if the fabric store down? Because the fabric store is the is the one is the is the database that is the store where is no sorry is the place where they put all the routing information, which is master, which is slave, and how many how many servers do you have, and all this stuff. Which is, which one is read write, which one is read only, and all this stuff. What happened is it's down. <coughs> Don't worry. No worry, your application can still access the data. Why? Because all the information already in the connector cache. So as as long as as the information is there, you don't have any problem. It will still be running. And then when you bring up the the fabric store again, it will just join again, and you don't have any problem at all. Right. So um, this is the the effect of the failover. So we are using uh, replication here. Primary is basically basically the master, the one that receives all the rights, right? This is the term that we are be, we will be using in the hands-on uh, uh, workshop as well. You will you will notice that. Secondary is the is the replication slave. It will it only accept read-only transactions, right? And then failover when when we have a primary when the primary is down or the master is down, the slave will automatically take uh, will will become the new slave. Eh, sorry, the new master. And it will all be managed by the fabric process. Okay. Right over here we have a high availability group concept. In, in this, uh, what it means is that um, in high availability group, you have, you have, you have uh, one master, only one master, right? But you, have, you can have a number of slaves. Some slave, you want to set it to become a slave, only slave. Slave that is ready for you to, be, to, to, take, to take over when the master is down. On the other hand, you might have a number of other slaves that you only assign for read-only transactions. So, the, and this is part of the one one group HA. So, the, you 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 make it different. You can put it that way. You can set it that way. Okay. Later, uh, at this point, maybe you guys a lot of uh, a lot of uh, question mark in your in your in your mind but later when you do a hands-on workshop you will see okay when uh, we define a group first we define a group first and then we add server to the group this is the HA group that we talked about just now 
and then after and then uh, we promote one server to be the primary first when we set up for the first time right and then we activate after after everything is done after we put all the all the master sorry all the server that we want to be part of that HA group then we activate it we activate the entire HA group so now the fabric will monitor the entire HA group Okay, so um, right, um, so scaling uh, in this case we actually scale horizontally, horizontally. So we don't need to we don't need to invest a big machine in the beginning, but we just start small. Guys, you you are you are doing startup, right? Most of some of you are doing startup, right? Any one of you doing startup here, right? Okay, you don't want to invest you don't want to invest a million dollar machine, isn't it? you you run right doesn't make sense might as well just buy a, a commodity server HP Dell it's only cost probably five ten thousand right that's it so and then you when your application database grow you just add more server add more server add more server done so you when you get the income you buy more servers easy as that right and uh, as you can see right now my scale the latest version is 5.6. The next one is 5.7. And at this moment, it's still an alpha release. Soon, maybe uh, next month, it, it will become a beta release or release candidate. Right. Uh, we are actually aiming to launch 5.7 to be ready for production use by October. Okay, as you can see there, that is the difference in performance between the different versions. You can see that how fast MySQL 5.7 as compared to the to the current version 5.6. So, when it comes out, you will you will be happy to see your performance increase a lot. So. Just a little uh, summary on the benefit of sharding. Okay, the the benefit of sharding is that we we can we can do a write scalability, handle more writes, because at first you have one one server and then after that you 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 add more server more server more server so you have you have more right. Then the, uh, that means you are actually handle you can handle more writes. Now, large data set, database, database too large. So since database too large, definitely it's, it's a recipe for slow performance. What you want is you want, to, you want to put more servers to manage the performance better. And of course, the improved performance, okay? <laughs> Right, uh, I don't think I need to do Sharding architecture. This is the, the architecture of sharding. So you over here you can see more clearly of what, how the architecture is. Okay, first you have connectors. This is the application, the, this is the connectors that you put in the application server, right? Right? So, as, as I mentioned earlier, the fabric, fabric store or the fabric node here will actually be talking regularly with the uh, connector in the in the application it will update the 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 entries for the information in the connector cache to make sure that you get the latest routing information right and then uh, on on this side you have all the shards and Okay, and a global group. Okay, so um, right. So this is the this is all the shards. Say uh, this is the all the the big tables that you have. Say you have one hundred million records. You split it. 
uh, across different chart, different service, right? Right. So the okay, the global group is the group where you want to put table that you don't want to chart. Right? You you definitely in your schema, right? Definitely there is some tables that is small. Say it's like reference table. Maybe in the in terms of uh, of the employee or employee, <coughs> you know the employee department table, EMP DPT table. Maybe department table is reference, right? Small table where you where you have a you have a you have a transaction table that 100 million records, but there is some small table that only have 20, 30 records. Do you want to shard it? Do you want to split it across a lot of shards? Doesn't make sense, right? You want to just keep it that way in one server. So you put that table in the global group. All the, this table is accessible from all the, uh, for, for all transactions. Right, uh, okay, this is the HA group. Like I mentioned, this is the global group. Primary, secondary, we have primary, secondary as well. <laughs> HA group, we have uh, primary, secondary, which is master and slave, master and slave. And all this is the extra read replicas that I mentioned, if you want to have more ability to take up more uh, read uh, operations. Okay, I think I spent too much time talking. Uh, Sharding setup. Okay, this one you will you will be doing it. Okay, late. You will be able to do uh, more operation in in terms of maintenance. You can actually move the shards from one server to the other, the other from one data, uh, the data from one shard to the other shard, right? You can actually also split the shard because your data is going to grow, right? In one shot, maybe that one shot is, is already too big and then you want to grow, you want to split it into a, uh, two servers as well, another server, so you have to split the shot. Okay. Right. Okay. Everyone already have your file. Anyone, anyone still need the file, the VM? Okay, cool, beautiful. All right. Anyone still need the the USB? No. Yes. Everyone cool. Okay. All right. So um, first of all, open the open the zip file. You can open the zip file, right? It's not corrupted, right? Cool. Okay. Right. So. Um, Right, so in this case, uh, what you need to do is, uh, if you run Windows, just run the VirtualBox Windows. Uh, if you run Linux, then uh, you can run the, lin the any any Linux that version that you want. Do you run Linux? Yes. But, uh, probably you need to download some. Okay. Just install the virtual box first, and then we need to do an import. When when it is done, when you click on the virtual box, it will appear like this. Without without this, all this is all these are empty. When the first time you run filter box. Thank you. 
Okay, when, when you see this already, you just import. Eh, sorry. Yeah, import. <laughs> just import. And then choose the, the OVA file that you just downloaded and that you just uh, copy. Right? Next. And then don't forget to reinitialize MAC address. And then just click import. That's it. It'll be importing and it'll probably take a few minutes, depending on your laptop. And probably most of you already using SSD, should be fine. There are a couple of things that <coughs> not in the not not in the slide actually. I just uh, I, I just found out in the in, in the in the VM that I that I did, that, that I did. Uh, we we need to do. There will be a number of replication troubleshooting steps that we need to do. Just a little bit. So the good thing is that. You will get to know how to deal with the replication issue like this. Okay. When it's done, when the import is done, please start it. Just click on it and then uh, click start. Still running. Okay, fine. No problem. No problem. No problem. <laughs> you still running? Right. Oh. Yeah. So I just downloaded it. So it's taking. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Right. I didn't realize that. I should. I should. I should put that. In a, in next time. Yeah, because I, actually most of you, most of you guys actually using a MacBook, right? <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah. Next time I need to. Switch.
Okay, everyone that uh, already done with uh, with the import you can just access it in this group and one and the password. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sorry? The root? Pass uh, you say it's root? Password is one, two, three, four, five, six. Because I'm, 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 we are going to need to do some uh, replication fixing, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what you need to do is that. Okay, there is another. Okay, guys. Um, in the application. In the, in the apps folder just now included in the zip file, there is a, there is a program called Putty. Right? Use this to access the the VM using the IP provided. Use this because because uh, if you if you are typing on the VM uh, window itself, you cannot copy and paste. You need to type everything. If you're using Putty, you can copy and paste the command. You don't want to waste time. Right. For those of you that are using Linux, you don't have issue. You just have to SSH to the to the VM. Okay. Right. So now. Now, if you have done the, the this slide, right? If you have done this slide, you definitely will have seven MySQL instances running in there. Seven MySQL instances in the in one VM, right? It will take some time when it's when you start it for the first time, when you start the script. This one, this script. Those are the instances that we are going to use for the fabric. One of them, which is the 13306 port, is going to be the fabric store. Here? It is actually in your. Uh, in your zip file, in the document folder. Oh, oh, you can find this. 
uh, MySQL fabric manage that one. Okay, so manage that one. Manage setup is basically to set up your the, the environment and to set up the admin uh, admin password for the your XML RTC connection, and then the start of course to start the fabric process. <laughs> Come again? So what, what we need to do here is that um, show slave status. You will see the, the status of the slave, right? The slave process and this is these two should be running. If not running, then your application is broken. Okay, go. Uh, in order to go there, you have to do this first. Just connect. Use MySQL client. Connect to 3307. Uh, one of them is uh, this is to the global group slave. The thing is that we might not have enough time, but uh, we just uh, we'll just do it uh, as fast uh, as I mean. As possible as we can. Okay, um, right. So, is it, is it, okay, when you connect to this, is it, uh, both of them are yes? Or got some, or got one no? Yeah, sure. Sure, sure. Sorry, guys. I uh, yeah. Hopefully, I, I don't. I don't really think that we have enough time. The organizer already. Uh, the organizer uh, uh, some other session after Yeah. No. Because uh, we have uh, like, I can use it 
labs and things like this. You know, like if we can engage and we will do a, another session. Okay. Which is what we call the hands on. I mean, there are more ways of doing this. And we can uh, also continue with our next uh, workshop on the presentation. I think that's a. Uh, okay, before me, just one more thing. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, the rest of them, when you do it, when you just follow the uh, the instructions, is okay. But this this step, you need to do it first for this this VM because uh, I have I used this VM before, and then I found that there's some things that is not done right. Um, okay, what you need to do is. When you over here, you should see some error uh, if your slave is not up. Okay. I would say do this. Okay. Check this first. The retrieve GTID and the executed GTID are they both the same? Right now, are they both the same? It, if they are the same, then that means that means you already already executed the entire transaction for this. If not the same, then you might get an error. You know what? It's not enough time. It's very hard for me to to, to, to go ahead and use this. I, anyway, it's possible. Can you post full or part of your slides? Then people, if they want to follow themselves, so they need you to explain everything. Is it useful for people if you distribute the slides to? I have inside the. the okay, okay, right, right. It's so already there. Maybe explain if they can do it on their own, or give your give your contact information if they want to ask you questions. Maybe. Sure, sure, or sure. Or we can also let's say if you, sure. if you want to give a talk on this at a fighter user meetup, we can also organize this. Right, uh, guys. Uh, okay, so for now, since they're done, we don't have enough time. So. Uh, I would say I will just give my contact. Okay. So if you have a uh, any problem running the running the instructions that uh, I give you in the slides? Just uh, let me know. I'll get you. I'll, I'll get you to the to the steps. There are some some things that uh, that is need to be done on the replication. We need to we need to basically we need to insert a blank transaction first in all the slave. Basically, that's the idea. But then it's just that we don't have enough time at this point. Right? So sorry guys. Huh? Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Right, so sorry guys and uh, thank you very much to join this session. I hope you, you guys uh, enjoy your uh, the, the zip file that I gave you. Let me know if you have anything and any information. We have, we have a contact. Thank you.